When talking about cities with 5 million people, your brain may jump to cities like Washington DC, St. Petersburg, Philadelphia, or Atlanta. Which, fun fact, I did not know that 5 million people would like to live and visit America's equivalent of a sweet tea addiction. However, there is a little known city to the far east that has more people than many of the cities mentioned previously, but is hardly covered in context of world history. That city is Qingdao, or Qingdao in Chinese. Although this city is hardly covered by Western media, it is perhaps most prominently known as that one city the No No Germans had. Oh, wait, no, not that No No Germans, that No No Germans had. It is a city rich with history not only from its former German colonizers, but also from its native inhabitants. So that begs the question, what was life like in German Qingdao, and how did Qingdao come under German rule anyway? On the 1st of November, 1897, the Big Sword Society, a Chinese peasant organization, murdered two German Roman Catholic priests, which became known as the Juyi Incident. Germany quickly exploited the situation to justify an occupation of the region around modern Qingdao. Just six days later, on the 7th of November, Kaiser Wilhelm II directly intervened and sent a message that read, Proceed immediately to Kachau with the entire squadron. To which a German admiral replied, We will proceed with the greatest energy. A week later, on the 14th of November, German boats cleared the bay around Qingdao and began to land an amphibious force of over 700 officers, led by Admiral Otto von Diederichs. By 8.15 that very same morning, the Germans had already occupied outer forts and had severed telegraph lines. Negotiations with the Chinese government began, and on the 6th of March, 1898, the German Empire accepted a leasehold of the bay for 99 years, or until 1997. Hmm. The lease agreement centered on Jiazhou, or as the Germans call it, Qiaqiao Bay, on the southern coast of the Shandong Peninsula. To the Germans, China represented the largest market not in Africa nor Europe for them to expand in, so it quickly became their priority to expand as much as possible into China, and more generally, East Asia. Germany quickly began to develop the small town. From 1910 to 1914, the town served as a base of the German Navy in Asia, along with ports and facilities in southern New Guinea. The Germans quickly changed the colony, building up infrastructure for the local residents, while also boosting the education rate of the city. Even Sun Yat-sen, the later first president of the Republic of China, stated in 1912 that, I am impressed. The city is a true model for China's future. However, this short period of relative prosperity would come to an end with the outbreak of world War one. By 1914, tensions in Europe were in flaring, and all major powers knew that there would be a war approaching. But what's it got to do with that random port in the middle of nowhere? What about the neighbors of the middle of nowhere? Who are they? China and Japan! Now, China is basically fighting five clones of itself at this point, but Japan is the real issue at hand here. And it just so happens that the next thing on the list, list is this part of China, China and lots of tiny, tiny islands. islands. Turns out all that stuff belongs to Germany. So, in 1914, Japan sent an ultimatum to Germany, demanding it withdraw from Qingdao or face military actions. Several days later. With over 23,000 soldiers, the Japanese and British armies led by Sadakichi Kayoti and Kamio Mitsumi attacked the German line. However, German commander Meyer Waldeck withdrew his forces from the two most outer defensive lines and concentrated his troops on the innermost line of defense, closest to the town itself. On September 2nd, a German gunboat sank a stranded Japanese destroyer while Japanese troops severed several communication lines and later railway systems. By the beginning of November, initial German forces numbered at nearly 3,750 troops had been reduced dramatically. After a disastrous retreat across a river, what was left of the German and Austro-Hungarian army asked for peace terms, effectively ending all central power resistance in the colony. The Allies formally occupied and controlled the colony on November 16, 1914. Out of the 23,500 initial troops to land in Qingdao on the Allied side, 727 were killed while 1,335 were wounded. Out of the roughly 3,750 German and Austro-Hungarian troops stationed in Qingdao itself, 199 were killed while 504 were wounded. Although German rule in Qingdao was short, it nevertheless significantly changed the Shangdong Peninsula and even inspired many upcoming leaders to modernize and recognize the need for change. Overall, the impact of the German hold on Qingdao is still profound, as even now, there are remnants of their rule in Qiaqiao Bay, now called Jiazhou Wai or Jiazhou Bay. Overall, the effects of German rule on Qingdao inspired many beneficial and negative thoughts, and greatly influenced power not only in the region, but also internationally. Thank you.